We're glad that you joined us for this lesson from the Central Church of Christ. This sermon is being released on the first Sunday night of January of 2021, and we're glad that you joined us. You're watching this as it's being released. This sermon is designed to provide you a lesson for uh, the 6 o'clock Sunday evening service. If you're watching this service, this sermon later, we're just glad that you stumbled across the video and hope this lesson encourages you as you study God's Word at any time, uh, especially as we think about this lesson uh, for our Sunday evening service here. Here at Central. There is a website, no I'm not kidding, called treehugger.org, or treehugger.com I should say, and according to that website, about three trillion trees currently exist. And they write that those trees are enriching habitats from old growth forests to city streets, yet despite our deep-rooted reliance on trees, we tend to take them for granted. Well, after this lesson tonight, I hope we don't take them for granted, but if I may, pardon me, go out on a limb and say it's probably not for the same reason that treehugger.com says we should we, we don't we take them for granted. I hope we'll take them not take them for granted for a different reason. Instead, it's because I want to focus on a word picture that's found in the very first psalm. In fact, the picture is found right in the middle portion of that poem, and it forms, it forms sort of the, the apex of the message that the inspired writer of that poem was giving us in that six-verse psalm. And so I hope you open your Bibles tonight to Psalm 1. And to set our thinking in the right direction, I want us to take a moment and read this brief poem together. It's only six verses long. Psalm 1, beginning in verse 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Now certainly, there are dozens and dozens of lessons that can be learned and preached from that very short poem. But I want us to focus on the word picture of that tree that's planted by streams of water that you'll find in the third verse of that poem. We have four points to our lesson tonight. But before we get to them, let's make sure we understand who it is that verse 3 is talking about, because this will help set the stage for where we're going in the next several minutes. The verse begins with a pronoun, he. He is like one planted by streams of water. So who is the one, who is the he, if you will, that this poem is talking about? Well, it's the one who avoids the things that are written about in verse 1, walks not in the counsel of the wicked, and so forth. And it is also he, the same one, who has a singular delight, and that delight is the law of the Lord. So much so that he meditates on the word of the Lord, the law of the Lord, constantly. The word meditate literally means to mutter it out of the overflow of one's thinking. It is someone whose mind is filled with the word of God. That's who we're talking about. Now the verse of our interest tonight, Psalm 1 verse 3, ends by saying, "In all that he does... He prospers. Now, that doesn't mean that we may read the Bible and then get rich automatically, or all of a sudden we read the Bible and we have a doctorate degree or something along those lines. It means that because we are avoiding evil and because we are spending time with the Word of the Lord and by that drawing closer to the Lord, we prosper in all the ways that God would have us to do so. We can face any circumstance, we can face any obstacle of life and be strong like that tree that's pictured in that poem. And so, if I want to be that kind of person, I need to be like that tree that's planted by streams of water. When I am, I will be healthy in spiritual ways, all spiritual ways. And so what I want to do with you this lesson tonight is to use that word picture as sort of a jumping off point and notice the ways in which a healthy tree grows. If I'm going to be one who prospers in the way that Psalm 1 verse 3 talks about, then I should notice spiritual growth, and that growth should come in several different directions, just as a tree grows in several different directions. As we said, we have four points tonight, so we might say we have four directions that a tree grows, that a healthy tree grows. Number one, a healthy tree grows downward. 
when we think about the the health of a tree and it's where our thinking is the health of a tree that's probably the first thing that we think about or at least one of the very one of the very first things we think about now, as large as a lot of trees are our minds are conditioned to realize that the strength of the roots the strength of that downward growth is part of where that height that strength that size where all of that comes from that those roots must continually be searching for nutrients from the soil. And they also, of course, help anchor the tree to the ground to, to avoid storms and other things like that. You know, the vast majority of trees, I'm told, have roots that are found almost exclusively in the first 18 inches of soil because there you'll find the most dense nutrients, but also because they can extend a long way out from the trunk in order to continually feed the tree and anchor it to the ground more, uh, more safely. It's even said that trees, if I may use a human term, communicate with each other by, by sharing helpful minerals and fungi in the soil through their roots. I don't know how that happens, but I'm told it does. Now, there are some trees that do grow very, very deep, not just in the first few inches of soil. Some trees, including hickory trees and oak trees, have what is essentially a taproot that can grow up to 20 feet deep. The deepest tree root that's been found in the wild is of a wild fig tree in some caves in Africa that was 400 feet deep. But no matter how deep the roots of a tree grow, or if they grow more wide than deep, the fact of the matter is, a healthy tree is growing downward. Underneath the surface of the earth, there is growth going on to gain those nutrients and other things, water and other things that the tree needs in order to be healthy, what we see above the ground. That's so what's no wonder then that Jesus himself used the imagery of a plant without a good root system in one of his parables in a way that's very, very memorable. In the parable of the sower, Jesus spoke of those who were on rocky soil. And he described them in these words in Matthew 13, verses 5 and 6. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil. And immediately they sprang up, and since they had no depth of soil, but when the sun rose they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Now, we're very grateful that in the parable of the sower, Jesus took the time later to explain it. And in explaining that part of the parable, in verses 20 and 21 of Matthew 13, he said this, As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy, yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while. And when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately he falls away. Did you notice the connection of the root in that parable with the persecution coming on account of the word. Now again, we tie this back to Psalm 1, the poem we're considering, and we see that downward growth, the growth of the roots. That's only possible if we're diving more deeply into the word. Isn't that what the psalmist David had been talking about? Meditating on the word of God and those sorts of things in the poem. Letting the word of God feed our soul. Letting the word of God anchor our lives. The same way a tree has roots that do those things, that's what our, if you please, downward growth is as we try to seek to be healthy Christians. There are a lot of people who hear sermons, may even attend Bible class, but don't really build roots in the Word of God. They, they may attend worship for the rest of their lives, but their mind's not in it. And it's because they, they've heard the arguments against the Bible, or they've been attacked by people at school or online or at work for their beliefs. And since they have no root in the Word of God, they're not strong enough to, to weather, to withstand those attacks. They may physically be present, or they may not be, but spiritually, there's no root there. And if that's true, there's no real health there. But to be healthy... We must grow our roots into the nourishing soil of the Word of God. And as we sometimes sing, feed on His Word. A healthy tree grows downward. How are your roots doing? But I also want to suggest to you that a healthy tree grows upward. And for most of us, this is what we think of when we think of trees. We're kind of conditioned to think of the roots. When we look at a tree, we see what we see. We, we think of the height and we think of the branches and the leaves that, that seem to reach upward toward the sky. And most of the time, we see tall trees, and they're, they're, tree, they're tall, excuse me, by comparison. By that I mean that they may be taller than our house, or they might be taller than a telephone pole, or something along those lines. And maybe we don't really 
take the time to think about just how tall they actually are. I'm told that the tallest tree in the world is a redwood tree in California that has the name Hyperion, and I'm told it stands a staggering 379 feet tall. Now, no matter what, how you look at it, that's a tall tree. To put that in perspective, a very, very tall specimen of a white oak tree will only <laughs> reach about 100 feet tall. Most are more like 50 or so feet tall, and this tree is 379 feet in the air. But the growth upward, no matter how tall the tree is, the growth upward is part of what makes a tree just, just look majestic. And we often will talk about it in poetic ways about reaching for the sky. Well, as we think about that, I want to suggest to you that when we are like that tree planted by the waters and we are healthy in that way, we also grow upward. That is, we grow closer to the Lord as time goes on. The fact of the matter is, being a Christian involves a relationship with the Almighty God. He reveals Himself to us through Scripture as a Father, and we are His children. And as we stay close to His Word, we learn more about Him, and we're drawn closer to them, I hope. We stand more in awe of His majesty and His power. We have a greater appreciation for His love and His grace and His mercy. And while we may not always fully understand everything that He's doing in the world, we trust Him more because we realize His perfect wisdom and His perfect goodness and His perfect timing. Listen to what David wrote in Psalm 37, verses 25 and 26. He said, I have been young, and now I am old. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, or his children begging for bread. He is ever lending generously, and his children become a blessing. When you read those words, do you see the upward reach of that? Over time, David had learned to trust in the Lord because he saw just how good God is to his people over time. It's not that everything that happens is always good. It doesn't mean that every day is great. But over time, we begin to reach more upward toward God because we see how good He really is. We sometimes sing the words, The longer I serve Him, the sweeter He grows. There's an older hymn that expresses much the same thought, even though we don't sing it as often. But I want you to hear these words and see if they don't ring true, especially if you've been a Christian for many, many years. Listen to these words written by Lelia Morris. Of Jesus' love that sought me when I was lost in sin, of wondrous grace that brought me back to his fold again, of heights and depths of mercy far deeper than the sea and higher than the heavens, my theme shall ever be sweeter as the years go by, sweeter as the years go by, richer, fuller, deeper. Jesus' love is sweeter, sweeter as the years go by. Now, if that isn't true of you, I'm begging you to spend more time in the Word of God. Put your roots deeper in the Word and see if over time you don't find yourself reaching up more and growing closer to God as you see His goodness and His help and His mercy and His grace through difficult circumstances in your life. Again, it's not that every day is going to be great, just like that tree is going to face storms and, and other attacks. But over time, we draw closer to our Heavenly Father. A healthy tree grows upward. We trust God more and more and more over time. Number three, a healthy tree also grows inward. Inward. Of all the directions we're looking at in this lesson, I suppose this is probably the one that we most rarely consider. We just don't see it normally, but without it, a tree will not be healthy and strong. A tree grows within. It grows inward if it is healthy. It gets bigger around. Right? We, we think of those rings in the tree that sometimes we were taught in elementary school or middle school. But it also has to keep things like, like capillary action going so that the nutrients from the soil spread all the way from the roots to every branch and limb of the entire tree. A dendrochronologist. I had no idea what that was until I was preparing for this lesson. But a dendrochronologist is someone who studies tree rings. That's what they do. And they can tell us that a tree will typically grow wider rings when the local weather has been wetter and mild and, and just good. And the tree will typically grow more narrow rings, thinner rings would be more the term they would typically use, I'm told, when the weather has been more extreme or dry. There can even be things that are called, they call scars on the rings that reveal something like a forest fire or other disaster in the history of that tree at the time that tree has been alive. But using that knowledge, I want us to make basically the same connection. 
I've heard it said that, that I don't know how many times you can count the rings on a tree until it's age. Well, that's mostly true, but not always. You see, dendrologists, these people who study tree rings, dendrochronologists, have learned that if there's something really severe, like a period of a great drought or something along those lines, a tree may not produce any rings at all. Or the rings may be so thin that they are basically unrecognizable from each other. Why? Well, because the tree, including the roots, will begin to basically pull in enough moisture and will begin to, to take care of itself from what's already there. And since it can't pull in any more or much more, it basically stops growing, or at least it slows down to an extreme level. Are you beginning to see the point? If we stop taking in the nutrition of God's Word, our inner self, our inner, our mind, our soul, our will, it stops growing in the way that it should. You see, the less of God's Word we take into our lives, the more room we give our heart, our heart and our mind and our attitudes to be on things that are truly dangerous to us and to have those attitudes that, that slow and even stall our spiritual growth. If left unchecked, that growth will stop. But we must do what Ephesians 4 verse 23 tells us to do. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And I want you to notice a verse from Psalm 119, that very, very long poem. But I want you to notice a connection between the Word of God and our inner person. Psalm 119 verse 175 says, Let my soul live and praise you, and let your rules help me. Now, I chose that verse out of that very long poem because a lot of people might think that the, the rules of God would be a hindrance. We don't like rules. We don't like boundaries. The King James Version of that verse uses the word judgments. But the point is, there are rules, there are ordinances of God that we must take in. But when we do, what's the rest of the verse say? The soul is alive. The soul is more able to praise God. Our inner self is renewed and strong, even by the, the boundaries, the rules, the judgments of God. It's not that we'll never struggle. It's not that we'll have a season of life, not have a season of life when we're struggling somewhat. But the more we understand that God's Word is really what helps us, as this verse says, the more over time that inner self is strong and growing stronger. A healthy tree grows inward. And you're probably already guessing what number four is. And that is a healthy tree also grows outward. Other than the leaves... When we look at a tree, what we're seeing for the most part is the outer layer. We, we typically call it the bark of the tree. Some trees have a, a very rough bark. Others, it's, it's not so rough. But trees are covered with that particular layer, no matter how thick or, or, or strong that it might be. They're covered with it for several reasons. Bark, that outer layer, does a lot of things. But among them, it keeps moisture in, nutrients in, and it keeps infection out, much like our own skin does. If a tree's bark is removed or if it's damaged to a great degree, it's really, really dangerous for that tree because that protective layer is no longer there. And the tree is basically just left exposed to very, very dangerous things. I, I don't claim to understand that, but we can see how that would work. But also, like our skin, the tree's bark basically grows with it. The bigger and the taller a tree gets... Well, the more bark is on the outside. You wouldn't have a tree that's six feet tall and a tree that then grows to be 16 feet tall and think the amount of bark would be the same because 10 feet would not be covered at all. So more bark is on the outside. So the entire tree is covered. The entire tree is protected. And again, that only occurs when a tree is taking in the water, the nutrients that it needs to make certain that that happens. And again, you see the parallel, I'm sure, with our need to take in the Word of God. In Psalm 119, verse 9, the poet said, How can a young man keep his way pure by guarding it according to your Word? There is something about the Word of God that when we drink it in and we take it into our lives, it helps us to be ready for the fight of the difficult things that our enemy, Satan, will throw at us. We must make sure that we are armed we talk sometimes, this reference is now on the screens, we talk sometimes about that Christian armor. And part of that is the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. We must have that ready for us to face the 
difficulties and the temptations that our enemy puts before us constantly. I'm not sure I understand every possible implication of Romans 7 and verse 7, but I still love the verse. In that verse, Paul wrote, If it had not been for the law, I would not have known sin, for I would not have known what it is to covet if the law had not said, You shall not covet. And I love that verse for a lot of reasons, but one of them is because Paul, it seems to me, was basically saying that the Word of God protected him from sin by letting him know what sin was, what this particular sin was, what coveting was. And and, and knowing that helped Paul realize that's something I need to fight against. Only the Word of God reveals those things to us. Our feelings don't Society doesn't, those things don't define what wrong is, and they certainly don't protect us from all wrong, but God's Word does. God's Word defines what is right and what is wrong, and God's Word protects us from those things that are wrong if we will take it in. We simply will not endure the temptations that the devil puts before us if we're not protecting ourselves with the Word of God and letting it build into our lives an ability to see good and evil, to see righteousness and unrighteousness, and then how to react to each one of those things accordingly, to run to those things that are righteous, and to be protected from those things that are unrighteous. Just like the bark of a tree protects it from the infections and other things from the outside and helps keep the good on the inside, so God's Word does for us. You know, Quite often we hear sermons like this one and we're reminded of the importance of being in the Bible, reading the Bible, and studying the Bible, but but maybe nothing very specific is given as far as the how. And I, I don't have the time in this lesson. It's not really the focus of this lesson to say, here, here are 55 steps of how to study the Bible. That's a different lesson. That's a different class if you want to think of it that way. But, but since we are right at the start of the year, now I give you just a couple of steps, in fact five, so more than a couple, uh, to take in 2021 and beyond that if you feel like your spiritual growth has just been kind of slowed or stunted, maybe you're feeling spiritually unhealthy, some steps you can take to help you be like that tree, to help you be like that tree that's planted like this, by the streams of water. Here are five. Number one, I would suggest to read through the Bible. And I know that we're already a couple of days into the year, but it's simply not too late. It's nowhere near too late to make an effort to read through the Bible this year. But even if you don't make that effort, if you've never read through the Bible at all, don't you, don't you think it's time you started? Even if it takes you a year and a half or two years to read through the entire Bible, did you realize it takes something like 74 to 76 hours to read through the entire Bible? In a year, non, a non-leap year, there are 8,760 hours, and all we need is about 75 of them. We have the other 8,700 and, and, and what, five to ourselves. Can we not find those few hours to say, I've read through all of God's Word? And even if it takes a year and a half or two years, if I want to make sure that I'm planted by streams of water, then I need to drink in all that God has to say. And it's not to say that I'll understand everything about every verse and every chapter the first time I read through it, but at least then I can say I've taken in all of it. Now I have a foundation from which I can begin. Suggestion number two, as you see on the screen, is to keep a Bible notebook. And by, by that I really just mean to keep some kind of list of things that you want to study further or things you don't understand, questions that you have. When What do you do when you hear something in a sermon or a class that you want to remember? What do you do when you have a question in a Bible class and and you, and it's just not answered at the moment, or one you just think of during the week, but you don't have time right then to, to drop what you're doing and study. Having some way to record those thoughts, those questions, those those reminders, those le- life lessons can mean so much. It may, maybe for you it's a file on your phone, your computer, where you simply write those down. Maybe it's simply a notebook. But something to record those seemingly random thoughts will make so much of a difference then as you strive to organize your study. What do I want to study in God's Word? Well, here are a couple of questions I've had for a long time that I've got written down. Why not begin there and seek to know the answer that God has in His Word for those things? Keep some kind of notebook or file of just those what seem like random thoughts because they're your thoughts and they matter. They're your questions and they matter. Number three is to watch and take in good material. I would just be shameless for a moment and say if, if you uh, don't subscribe to Central's Facebook or YouTube page, you're, you're missing out with, with margin notes. And we are really trying to 
uh, make those better. And y'all, I hope you'll see that beginning uh, even this Thursday, this coming Thursday as this is being released with the first margin notes of 2021. But find good materials. Maybe you're a visual person. World Video Bible School has hundreds and hundreds of videos on particular books of the Bible, particular topics, all online for free. We from Central release devotionals and, and Bible lessons, and so many other churches do as well. Watch those materials. If you're a member at Central, keep in mind that we have a congregational license to polish in the pulpit 365, so you can watch those lessons anytime you want. And there are hundreds and hundreds of lessons by faithful gospel preachers and teachers that you can just watch or have on in the background while you're working around the house or doing other things so that you're taking in God's Word and deepening your knowledge as you're able. Number four, again, as you see on the screens, take part in Bible classes. And I know right now that's not as easy with some people not being able to get out and be in person, but we stream our classes, our adult classes. You can watch those. But whether whether it's virtual or in person, make Bible class a priority. I will tell you, and not just because I'm one of them, because I sit in other classes as well. Our teachers here at Central know the book. And they seek to make the lessons biblical, yes, but also very practical. And and, and almost any time I listen to a class, I'm, I'm something's triggering my mind that I want to study further and, and know better. The more that you're not only present, but you're truly listening and taking notes or, or doing whatever you need to do to, to take part, the more you'll have something to study on your own time. But I also suggest to people, and you take part in Bible classes as a way to guide your own study. A lot of people say, I, I know I need to study the Bible, where do I start? Well, why not start right with what you're studying in your Bible class? On Wednesday nights right now, we're studying Hebrews. Why not go back and study those verses again that we talked about the week before and see if you can't deepen your knowledge? Use that as a guide. What a great way to just begin your own study by using those things. For our ladies, our ladies' Bible class is scheduled to restart on Tuesday afternoons. What a great way to study God's Word. And then five, I would suggest that you resolve to teach someone else. It sounds cliche, but it's simply true. You just do not learn anything as much as you learn it because you're trying to teach it. In other words, the teacher has more knowledge than they let out in any lesson. They, they've taken in extra study materials. They've, taken, they've tried to anticipate questions someone might ask, and they have studied a great deal. If you want to know the Bible, make a resolution to have a Bible study with a non-Christian, with an erring Christian sometime this year. You may find yourself, yourself studying some of the, the basics of the faith, but you'll also find yourself probably diving more deeply into the Word of God than you ever have because you want to make sure you have answers to the questions, not for your own sake, but to make sure the Bible speaks in those conversations. So make sure you do something, because we must make sure that we're like that tree planted by streams of water, and all that we do when that happens will prosper. When we take in God's Word constantly, when we're devoted to the reading and the studying of it, and we're seeking to understand, praying for wisdom, and trying to help others understand, then from God's viewpoint, everything that we do prospers. We may not be rich, we may not be famous, we may even have poor health, but from God's point of view, we're prospering because we're like a tree that's planted by streams of water. We are growing downward, we are growing upward, we are growing inward, and we're growing outward. How's your spiritual growth? If this lesson tonight or anything else you've seen on our Facebook or YouTube channel has prompted questions, you can leave those as a comment, or if you don't want to leave them in public, use the uh, social media channels to, to contact us or uh, find our contact information and call or write us. We would love to speak with you more, study with you more. As we say many times, not to just tell you what we think, but to make sure we're teaching what the Bible says, because that's what we want to teach only, is what God says through His Word. We want to thank you for watching tonight. Let's take a moment to pray together, and then this lesson will end, and we pray that you'll have a good week. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, thank you for your word. Thank you for being gracious to give it to us. Thank you for being one who encourages us to, uh, to study, but also gives us a book that while some things in it are basic and easy, we're going to spend our lifetime trying to understand other things from it. Help us to mine for the treasures that you have placed in it, and be encouraged every day to grow more deeply uh, in a knowledge of your word and in the application of your word. Help us to be doers and not hearers only. Help us to be faithful. In Jesus' name, amen.